she just needs help today. Good morning, everyone. So the young people meet. We haven't joined the meeting. Is anyone there? It doesn't matter, okay. We need to see what I said on Google Classroom. Um. <laughs> So, oh gosh, um, yeah. So when I when I made that video, because you know cancer is a subject that it's very touchy, and I'm not in class, so I don't know, you know, if, if anyone that I'm teaching has got family members with it or have passed from it, or so that's why I wrote that introduction. And I mean, I I know people who've passed from cancer, so I mentioned it was um, my one aunt. I don't know if Hannah remembers when she had that brain tumor, but she was 75. And it just, she was, she was blind, she's been blind, she was blind her whole life. And then all of a sudden, she used to knit everything. And she could live in her own house, she was blind. And she knitted everything and beautiful stuff. And then they told us she had cancer. And it was what? It wasn't even a few months. Okay? So, yeah, she, I think she, you know, it happened once they found it and when she passed, it was like four months. And it had grown that big in the brain. So it was, it was ridiculous. Oh, hello, there are people there. Um, so, and then, so I mentioned that. And then, I mean, you know Mrs. Al Miss Altona, Mrs. Altona? Yeah. Her husband had brain cancer, and I was with her. Um, and we, I mean, we actually went to visit him, and I saw this man change. I mean, he was the most amazing person. Do you remember? And he was so happy and energetic, and, and we saw him that and during that night. And he, he couldn't, he was lame, and he couldn't walk. Do you remember? And he nearly fell over, and he couldn't eat properly. But he was so hungry because this tumour was um, starving his body. Because that's what tumours do. They starve the body of the nutrients that they need. That's what they do. And we saw it in front of our eyes. And then she went to Cape Town, and we thought, well, the, the, even the oncologist thought that he'd still live for many months, two weeks. And, I mean, it was terrible. You just, you just, you know, you can't, and, yeah. So that's why I'm always wary, I get goosies now. I'm always wary about talking about cancer, but I think it's something that we do need to understand. And from a point, from a, 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 um, a, an aspect, you know, the aspect of cell division, it is cell division that's going wrong, and we don't know why it happens. And I think it's more common now because we live longer, plus we're living in an environment where... Um, we are exposing ourselves to human-made things, not just grass and trees, you know, like early humans. We're exposing ourselves to things that we made that a lot of them contain mutagens. And we hear it every day. Don't eat too much of this because it's, it's cancerous. Don't eat that. Don't touch this. Don't breathe in this. Don't go there because it's mutagen mutagenic. And we hear that all the time. So, yes, cancer is more common because of our lifestyle and what we're exposed to but also because we live longer and cells get old and their genes sometimes mutate, like if you know, sunlight on your, you know, on your skin and then the DNA mutates and you could get a melanoma, which you know, a tiny melanoma is really, really bad. It's amazing how that little thing can cause a person to pass away 
So it's all about being aware. That's what I think. All right, so, you know, ladies go for pap smears and check your body, check the moles, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, what else? What else can you tell me? You know, tell me your little stories. What do you know? Any yeah. stories? Yeah? Mark, um, she had all types of cancer. There was colon cancer and there was breast cancer. Yeah. So if you're going to tell a doctor, it's actually a lot more or less. She found that she had cancer at the age of 20. Yes. And then she lived up until she was 65. Yes. So she didn't know she had colon cancer. She didn't know she had breast cancer. She had a double mastectomy. But she didn't know she had colon cancer. Like, but that's what causes it. Yeah. Because of the colon cancer. So that's why I said in that video, and I, I'm not an oncologist, I don't know enough. That's why I said that every cancer they regard as a different disease, or they've got groups. So they sort of know, okay, if you've got that type of cancer, you can use these treatments, or maybe this person needs something else, or how, you know, how they approach it. Because they're all different. And it's cell division going wrong, and sometimes those cells stay in one area. Then we say it's benign, and they're often surrounded by a membrane. It just, or it means that the cells don't spread. They don't break off and spread elsewhere. Now, we had a teacher here. It's probably before, yeah, it's before your time. You didn't know Nadia Nordia. No. So she was younger than me. And she started a year after me. I've been here 13 years. How long? Yes, 13 years. Okay. And she had breast cancer. And she had a mastectomy. And then it spread. I don't know if she had the other one removed, and then to her liver and to everywhere. But she was still here, and she's the lady who's responsible for the um, design of the library. Mm -hmm. So her plaque is outside. But we could not believe how someone, I mean, she was a lovely lady, very quiet, soft-spoken Afrikaans lady, and how she just progressed. And I visited her the few days before she passed, and she had all her cats there. And oh. It's hard to speak to someone who's got cancer, you know? Do you remember me going there? It was in Kenton. We had to go there. And, yeah, and um, I went to go and speak to her, and then she was gone. You know, so it's, it's, yeah, it's not easy. All right, so I think the message that you get from this little section, because, yes, it's not an easy section to talk about, and I think bio does that. Is, you know, even in grade 9, I said, right, we learned digestive system, then what about some diseases? We learned this, uh, respiratory system, okay, emphysema and lung cancer. Because we need to know, and that's why I'm, I'm always pushing, don't smoke, don't drink. I'm not saying don't drink ever, all right? But if you do have those substances in your body, you are more prone to, sorry? Yeah, you are more prone to getting liver cancer, to messing up your brain, killing your brain cells, dying the first time you take a drug. You don't know that. You don't know if what you're doing now is going to cause something later on in your life. Kids vaping, and they ended up, it's that, what's that disease called? I was reading up on it. It was in the, I made a case study for grade nine online. Pulmonary something something syndrome, where they vape, and then they end up in hospital, and the one parent didn't know her daughter vape, or no, she did, and said, yeah, she does vape. And they're like, are you crazy? Because this child died because of vaping. Because we don't know, it's, you know, it's like, Smoking cigarettes. My grandfather, my mother's mother, smoked his whole life. He lived till 80, I don't even remember, 87. My other grandfather, he had yellow fingers. But they were, such, they were so sweet. They were loving people. But he, you, in those days, smoke, it's good for you. Ride horses, you go into the wilderness, you know, those adverts. He smoked also, but um, he died of old age. My granny, my dad's mom, out of emphysema. So did my one uncle, this, the blind lady's um, lady who got cancer. Her husband died of emphysema caused by smoking. But it affects different people in different ways. So you could vape once and end up in ICU. You could vape your whole life and not end up in ICU. You could take ecstasy once and die. You could take ecstasy your whole life and, or, you know, when you're young and not, nothing happened to you, but you never know. That's, that's my... My message, yes. Mark, I had a question. When we visited my dad's cousins, they yeah. want to get checked for breast cancer because mm -hmm. their parents had one, their parents had cancer, and their parents before, and then yes. also my dad's mom had cancer. Yes. So then if cancer, like, can be passed down. Yes. So Angelina Jolie, I don't, I think I mentioned the video, but Angelina Jolie, her aunt, her mother, I can't remember, but there's a woman in her family 
who have had breast cancer, and I'm not sure, I can't remember if they've died or if they're living or if they have mastectomy, but they can look for the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene. You can actually get tested for that and then be more aware and proactive and go for screening and like Angelina Jolie had a double mastectomy because she doesn't even want to go through that. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's, diff it's different for everybody and there are, I mean, we now know that viruses cause cancer. When I was at school, we didn't know that viruses can cause cervical cancer. So human papillomavirus, HPV, it's the same one that causes genital warts and there's a different one that causes the mouth ulcers. Mm. Papillomavirus, I get mouth ulcers, so does she. But it's different, it doesn't mean you're gonna get cervical cancer. It's a different, because there's lots of groups of viruses and they now know, and you know, in South Africa, we've, um, the, the incidence of, um, you know what cervical cancer is? Okay, it's the, it's the opening to the, the uterus is behind. Mm -hmm. There's a little opening and the sperm goes up. This part here is what they check. They take cells from there mm -hmm. and they put it on a slide. Or they take the cells, the doctor sends it off to the lab and then they grow them on a slide or yeah, they're given nutrients and things and then they see the cells and they can see if the nuclei are too big compared to the cell and the color and the shape, the, the stain that it takes up. So yeah, so that's, you know, in South Africa, it's the pap smear and it's uh, mammograms checking the breast tissue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they say, you know, sexually active, people, sexually active um, adolescents, young people, you know, you should be having pap smears. And I'm not promoting having sex and whatever, but you should have pap smears because you are exposing yourself to who knows what. Not only your boyfriend or whatever, but you're exposing yourself to whoever, way beyond there. So it's choices. It's all about choices and it's about being powerfully knowledge-wise and making choices that fit you and not worrying what other people say or think about you. It's not my life. This is my life. You are your life. You make your own choices. And that's what I believe. All right? Shannon is extremely valid. <laughs> no, seriously. I do this with every grade. I do this in grade 12 and I do it in grade 10. Because that's what I believe. And I don't care that I don't drink a lot. I sometimes do. I don't smoke because I hate it. It doesn't bother me what someone else thinks. Me. I like chocolate. <laughs> okay. So that's my message, all right? So that's what the, um, the text... Look, the textbook... This textbook is brief, and that's why I do add extra things. So, um, okay, so we'll watch another video. So it was... You know, what are cancer cells? Why are they growing so weirdly? And that one video has explained it better than me because there are genes that stop and start cell division. And I don't mind if you watch it again. It talked about the car and that can, you know, cells continue to divide or they don't, they, they don't know how to stop. So they, they, they um, cause normally when cells um, divide by mitosis, uh, pen, um, we know the cell cycle, but we know that the, interphase when they're not dividing and not all cells divide some cells in your body never divide we used to think that brain cells never divide now we know they do that brain tissue can be repaired and the brain is the most misunderstood organ in the body that even i don't know enough about all right and we you know muscle cells don't divide they grow bigger they make more cytoplasm red blood cells are formed in the bone marrow their nuclei die and then they end up in the blood they only live for three months but there's more space for hemoglobin if the nucleus isn't there. So the body is a, it's a marvelous thing about how all this works. My grade 12s, we were talking, they were like, wow, because they were asking questions about mutations. We're doing that now. And I said, do you see, I actually said to them, I said, in grade nine, people go, oh, biology, oh, I'm not taking biology. Mm -hmm. But they don't see this, you know, how it affects our lives and, you know, CRISPR and mutations and how we really get into it. We never did this stuff at school. We learned this, then that, a section, then another section. This is all new, and this is application. And it's making you ready for a world. Maybe you get involved in a, a medical field or something. It's not the biology I learned at school, where if you don't copy the picture exactly and the word sentence, you know, word by word, you got it wrong. That's nonsense. That's not even understanding. Okay, so cells are generally in a long interface before they divide again. So think of the cell in your skin. Um, they're replacing, they're moving out and replacing the ones that are lost. So if UV light damages the cells, the basal layer of the skin, and UV radiation damages the DNA, then those cells are not going through a long enough interphase, so they're mitosis and cytokinesis. So now what happens, 
Um, okay, oh, let's just rub that off. So that's a normal cell cycle. But with cancer, all right, the cell, um, the interphase is so short, and this part happens, say, in 20 minutes, and then they hardly have interphase and divide again. Whereas normally cells get a chance to grow and make more organelles and make enzymes and protein synthesis like they normally should. But with cancer, interphase is so quick. That's why their cytoplasm is so small around this huge nucleus that they just form these bundles of cells really quickly. But now, like you said, your, it was your granny. So she had breast cancer from age 20. All right, it's Lorena. Yes. Um, she had breast cancer from age 20 and then she only passed at age 65. So her, for whatever reason, her cells took much longer to grow. And the same with Mrs. Altone's husband. He was, he was diagnosed with that nine, well, when, you know, before he passed nine years ago. And he went into remission. Well, they tried to remove most of the tumour, but they couldn't get it all out because it was too close to his brainstem. So then that year, she was trying to get other specialists in Cape Town and wherever to do an operation, people who were willing to now go and dig that tumour out again. And no, the first time it wasn't, they did radiation. It wasn't very close to the brainstem and he was fine. And then in that year, I could see how he changed. We all thought he was fine. And then in a few months, things started going wrong and he lost his ability to do things. And they found that that tumour had grown into the brain, too close to the brainstem. So when she was asking for um, specialists to re-operate using, um, you know, what's his name, Clive Russ, the cricketer, they used a new technology in South Africa to remove his brain tumour. Mm -hmm. And it's a, instead of just radiation directed, I mean, it's all very precise. They direct radiation at, um, maybe, no, I'm not, I, I think the people at home can see me. They direct radiation at that point. That's why they draw the crosses and the dots. Oh, yeah. But then in South Africa, they had this new, and I had a question on it for grade 10 a number of years ago. They did, um, when he passed, um, there's a, there was a new, it was like this mesh thing that they wore for him over his face, and it held his head in such a precise position that they only targeted the cells of the tumour and not other tissues. So it was so precise. And they did do that, but then he still passed. So there was obviously another reason why the cancer carried on. Yeah. Wow, so this is a weak chemo or whatever, and then eventually failure cancer goes away. How does it come back? Does it just mean that it never actually went away? That there were still some cells there that didn't get affected. Okay. Yeah, and the thing with chemo is it affects fast dividing cells. Mm -hmm. So that's why they get, you know, itchy skin and the esophagus hurts because the cells lining your esophagus the, they call columnar epithelial cells they get they break down with your food yeah. they pass out and you continue just like you're making these skin cells and new mouth cheek cells you've got food in there and it's moving and it's chomping the cells lining your cheek are replaced often the cells lining your esophagus are placed replaced often because there's so much friction of food and lining your whole gut hairs are going away <laughs> Yes, so yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, so chemo not only affects malignant cells which are dividing too quickly, it affects cells that are dividing quickly in your body, like skin and esophageal, or lining of your gut cells. It affects and hair cells which are dividing to make your hair grow. All right, so even you lose your eyelashes and everything like that. Yeah, so it affects every, any um, quickly dividing cell. All right, so... Guys at home, is it, I'm just going to show another video. So I hope you can see it. And I'll, I'll upload again later on. So today is just to kind of round everything off. Oh, and you know what? Let's do it now before the video. So on page 56, I know there's lot of, not a lot of information. So as long as you understand what malignant or benign means. A benign tumor is one that doesn't. Yeah, the cells don't break off. It stays in one place. Dr. Pimple Popper. Okay, they often cysts or whatever, but sometimes she removes a growth. All right, and then they find. Or there's those people with those huge facial tumors. They're benign. They're not cancer. They're just tumors which are growing into, but then they live in a poor region and nobody knows, and the doctors are too scared to operate. But it's, ben it's, not, it's not malignant. It's benign, but it's erading their face. All right. If they took it off early, off when they were young, it would be gone. Okay. 
and then if it regrew, they take it away. Because some people have a disease where they continuously grow these little tumors on their bodies. What's that? Uh, but then there's also lipomas, little fatty growth. That's mm -hmm. that's a, a benign fatty. It's not a it's not a cancerous tumor. It's a collection of fat. The lipomas, Dr. Pimple Popper. All right. Um, but malignant means that usually it's not surrounded by some kind of capsule, and then those cells they go into your lymph system. Now you you've got the blood vessels, mm -hmm. but you've also got this drainage system of lymph vessels, which we didn't do in grade nine. But maybe we can do it this year because we're supposed to do circulatory system, but we don't have time, but now we do. So there's a system of lymph um, vessels that drain excess fluid. You know if someone's bedridden and they go puffy, yeah. or pregnant people, yes, I went puffy. So it, it means that that lymph drainage is not working properly. So the lymph is drained away by these lymph vessels back into the blood. But now what happens is the cells break off the tumor and they end up in the lymph vessel and they travel through the, maybe into the lymph nodes and then the cancer grows in the lymph nodes. Or it spreads to another part of the body like with Miss Nordia into her liver and wherever else it was. She was colon everything. Okay. So, um, so breast cancer, for example, if they remove a tumor from, bre from a breast or they do radiation and they check the, the lymph nodes in the arm because the cells can go into these little glands, little lymph glands in your arm as well, and they remove that as well, and it's really painful, apparently. Yes? No, I'm just like, um, yeah. like there's breast tissue in your armpit. Say again? There's breast tissue yes. in your armpit. Oh, no, you can also get a breast tumor in your armpit. In your armpit. And males can get breast cancer too. Yeah. Because they do have tissue there, it's just not glandular for milk production. Yes? I want to ask, for leukemia, do the cancer cells leave the blood cells? So, it's the white blood cells. Um, it's on my PowerPoint as well. Okay. So it's white blood cells which are not dividing properly. Okay. okay? Um, yes, and they cancerous. And it's weird that a cell not dividing properly yeah. can cause you to pass away. I mean, Jeremy Mansfield had leukemia. He's now in remission. You know Jeremy Mansfield, the crazy, uh, what was he from House Bath and Jacaranda? He's my, my town. He's the, uh, the DJ. No, not DJ. What do you call him? Radio. Uh... Thank you. Okay. So he's in remission. Uh, Johnny Clegg died from was it pancreatic cancer. But that's yeah, quite... They used to get rid of leukemia. Like, leukemia yeah. works. So they use chemo, but then they also do a bone marrow transplant. Where oh, they take... Okay. Like, I, I'm a, a blood donor, so I could actually go, but then you've got to, use, you've got to pay for it yourself. And it's oh, quite okay. sore, which is probably why I didn't want. It's not like blood donation, you go and you don't pay for it. Yeah. So they, they take bone, I think it's out of your hip or your shoulder, they take bone marrow, so your cells are healthy, and then they kill, they use chemo to kill the bone marrow of the person with yeah. leukemia, and then they transplant this bone marrow in, which then takes over, and they produce normal white blood cells. Okay. That's leukemia. And there's different types of leukemia as well, many different types. All right. Um, Okay, so benign and malignant we talked about. Secondary cancers. So that's like Miss Nordia, where the cancer spread from her breast into other regions. I think they opened her up and they said, well, it's all over. They yeah. can't do anything. And then causes of cancer. So chronic infectious diseases, like hepatitis can result, hepatitis B and C, not A, can result in liver cancer. Um, HPV, the one that can cause cervical cancer. Yes, no? Okay, it's a virus. There are different viruses, and they, I don't know a lot about it, but they affect the liver. And then the person becomes jaundiced because the liver isn't working properly. And uh, B and C, I think, are the ones, please forgive me, I haven't read up on this. Um, B and C are more, con are more drastic than A, but you can't be around people with hepatitis because you can get that. Oh. You've got to be very careful. What was your question? Um, so, coronavirus affects old people because their respiratory system isn't working that well. So, if they got coronavirus, is it possible that they could get lung cancer? Yeah, because maybe they've had can no, okay, so maybe they've had cancer which makes their respiratory system a little bit less efficient, or maybe they've got diabetes, or oh, okay. people with HIV and TB. They're already immune compromised, especially mm -hmm. if they're taking ARVs and things. So, they're already immune compromised, and that now just the, the coronavirus gets in there and then just goes mad. That's how I understand it. And young children, they don't really get it, I've heard. Yeah. 
you know. But as you get older, if, if you've got comorbidities, I mean, I've never heard of that word before. Yeah. Comorbidities meaning that you've got other illnesses that could exacerbate the problem. So someone who dies, they say, die from coronavirus, but maybe they had emphysema or asthma. Yes. So my dad has diabetes, and mm -hmm. you know how studies show that people who have high melanin have diabetes? Mm -hmm. Why is that? I'd have to look that up. Because that, that is true. Diabetes is more common in people with darker skin colour. Yes, it is. Really? Yeah. But it was he born with it, so it's type uh, 1. No, it develops, so it's different. So, so it's type, type 2. Yeah, yeah, it's type 2. Yeah, but my mom has that. You know that. She's got it, but very mild, and she controls it with her diet. So I need to watch out. Yes, I do. Okay. Hello. Kevin. Uh, hi. Yes. yes. Is it hereditary? Yeah. It can be, but it can also be a spontaneous mutation. So my one cousin, her little five, well, when, when, they, when they found out that her five-year-old had diabetes, it was a mutation. It was a mutation in the gene for the pancreas, for making insulin. So it can be hereditary. So type one can be hereditary, or it can be a spontaneous mutation. Oh, who am I talking to there? Um, or it can be a result of diet and, you know, lifestyle, lifestyle choices. Type 2 is, yeah. Okay. Who else is there? I only see Teglin's little T there, little T. Who else is there? Uh, the here, here, and Anika's here. Okay, we need to figure out how to show all of you on there. Yeah, so in the okay, you're going to do it just now. Why someone will not me, please. Okay. Yeah, so I only see one person, and I think there's one person here. So... I thought Priyasha was only there the other day, but actually there were other people, Dylan and who else, I can't remember, James and so on. Okay, guys, and is it too dark, people? Must I put the light on? People at home. Uh, I can see you fine now. Okay, because I'm, I'm getting to a video, that's why. <laughs> okay, so then treatment of cancer on page 57. And we can watch that now. So surgery to get the tumour out. Hopefully they can get the whole thing out. And then key radiotherapy, where they direct those radiation. It's rays. It's like intense radiation, like burning it down. Yes. Now, for autoimmune, it's basically caused by a mutation. Mm, okay, let me think about that. No, because they can be caused by viruses and bacteria, but then um, mutations can result in disease because the body doesn't function the way it should, like diabetes, like cystic fibrosis, like he, um, hemophilia. This is all the juicy stuff we're doing in grade 12. We're doing it now. Okay, so no, disease can be caused by um, pathogens, and you do that in grade 11. Pathogens like viruses, bacteria, etc. Okay, all right. Um, then, okay, so radiotherapy where they direct radiation and they go, you know, they make little crosses and things and mark a pen and then they direct it there and it hopefully shrinks the tumor and then they often use a combination of chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And chemotherapy is that, you know, the drip or medication by mouth or whatever, tablets and things. It depends. Every cancer is different. And it's chemicals that will target those cells and stop them dividing, but then the hair falls out and the esophagus gets sore and things like that. The throat. Now, I'm also wondering, this lady had cancer, but when she did chemo, she put like ice caps on and said the hair wouldn't fall out. Why did that happen? Yeah, I've heard of that as well. I don't know. Maybe it slows down the growth of the cells metabolism I don't know and you know this just mentions treatment of cancer in other words the current medicinal treatments but there are people who go the holistic way the organic way and they change their whole lifestyle and they de-stress and they take um, uh, supplements mm -hmm. and yeah mm -hmm. um, She's in remission. Guys, can you hear if the people in the class talk at home? Can you hear? Hey? Yeah, we can hear them. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Yeah, so there's many different routes, and you don't have to, you know, and doctors kind of force you sometimes to take, have chemotherapy and radiotherapy, but people have a choice. Yeah. Now, can I stress cause cancer? I'm sure it can. Yes, I'm a teacher. <laughs> no, but you know what? Yeah, it's, it's something I used to worry about it when I was young, like eight. Mm -hmm. And I've told her sister worries. And I've told her, I said, I used to worry about it because you think, oh, and we all do that. I think we all go through that. 
But you, stay, you know, you can't live your life like that. Yeah. You just need to be aware. Mm, okay, oh, I've got. A, I, I always say I must go and get my moles checked out, and I check them. And, you know, yeah. Just be careful. Don't throw things in your body. And I get this now because of the pollution, mm -hmm. and because my mom and dad smoked my whole young life. So I think I get this every year. My what's it? A sinus post nasal drip because I was exposed to secondary smoke, and they say that sometimes secondary smoke can be worse and can cause cancer earlier. Mm -hmm. But I'm quite healthy, so I'm okay. Well, let me just keep looking. <laughs> okay, all right, so attitudes and beliefs. So yes, it was very difficult for me to try and think, okay, how am I gonna start this online? And that's why I gave that little story. Um, and we've talked about that, that, that attitude. You know, fatalistic, oh, I'm gonna die. There's some people, and yeah. Mrs. Altona's husband was not like that. He said, oh, I'm gonna beat this till the end. He was joking and he just thought, well, yeah. Um, believing in that all cancer treatments are ineffective. For some people, only the medicinal one are going to work, the traditional, um, or only the holistic, the organic route. Or um, feeling that cancer will never happen to them. Of course, some, they don't like going to the doctor. You watch these programs on TV, and they've got something wrong with them, and they say, well, when did this start? Oh, about 20 years ago. So we need to change that mindset and be aware of our bodies. And that's why when I go to a doctor, I ask too many questions, and I think they get a bit cross with me, because they say, what about this, 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 and this? Because I want to know. I don't want you to tell me you've got this and yeah. take this medicine. I want to know why is it like that? Okay, they think I'm bossy. All right. Um, believing that healthy, organic food, alternative medicine, exercise, and positive thinking. Yes, Erin's friend, aunt. Yeah. Okay. Believing that there is nothing modern medicine cannot cure. And they are trying to find lots, you know, cures for cancer, um, many scientists all over the world are trying to do that, and there's lots of clinical trials and things, and, and even genetic engineering, if they can genetically engineer um, cells or bacteria in the body to take the correct gene in and, you know, so that the cancer doesn't carry on. There's all of that going on now. I don't know where it's leading. Okay, so I don't, some of you know, I've always talked about, okay, so I've been teaching now since 1992. That's a long time, okay? So I always talk about my iceberg principle. I know, when I started teaching, I think I was awful. I hardly knew anything. And we were, we didn't have internet and all of that. We had little black and white textbooks and that's what we had. But now we've got the internet and all this information. So every day and every time someone asks me a question, I say, I don't know. I've never looked that up. I've never heard of it. So that's my iceberg and I know that even though I'm learning Google Classroom now and a few other things, there's so much information biologically wise that I don't know and I don't pretend to know and I will never know. So that's what, you, that's what I know I know, but there's so much more that I don't know, but it's that inquiring mind that you have to be, you know, you as young people, you're going to be like that. Because we're not just in you know, the olden days where you got a textbook and that was it. We are exposed to so much information and, you know, about cures of cancer and all of that. So that's how I feel about things. Okay, so let's, I think I need a break because my voice is going funny. You guys can watch the video online or I'm going to upload it and you can watch it at home. It's up to you. Okay, guys, at home. All right. Okay, I'm going to play the video and then, yeah. How much time? 20 minutes. So I know we, I put some on um, Google. Just please tell me because I haven't now checked which ones I did put on Google. If you have cancer, your doctor may recommend chemotherapy as part of your treatment. Did you see this one? The lady with a funny voice. The mechanical voice. The cells in the body grow and divide as part of the normal cell cycle. The cell's nucleus controls this process. Inside each nucleus, genetic material called DNA contains the instructions for directing this process. Sometimes the cell's DNA becomes damaged. Normally, the DNA responds by either repairing itself or instructing the cell to die. Okay, so 
DNA can become damaged by mutagens or things like you know, UV radiation on the skin or chemicals in the environment. And there are actually enzymes which often fix up the DNA when it's replicating. But sometimes that doesn't happen. Or there's programmed cell death where the cell has almost got, it's like those lysosomes. Do you remember lysosomes? They are switched on and then the cell dies because there's something wrong with it. So that's called programmed cell death, like making your separate fingers. Okay. So these are sample videos that people, that doctors and then clinics would use to show their patients. In cancer, however, the parts of the cell's DNA that direct cell division become damaged. When these sections are damaged, the DNA is unable to repair itself or cause the cell to die. Instead, the unrepaired DNA causes the cell to grow and divide uncontrollably into more damaged cells called cancer cells. A tumor forms as the cancer cells multiply and displace the normal cells. Not that quick. As the tumor enlarges, it develops its own blood supply. I'm going to stop it here because I did watch one of those bizarre body whatever the other day. Um, and this person had this child had this huge tumor in the face, but it's uh, all tumors on the body or whatever. But they can't just remove it because it's got these blood vessels going in. They can bleed to death. Because it's got the blood supply making or giving it nutrients that it can grow so quickly. Okay. Since cancer cells do not stick together as well as normal cells, they may break away and enter a nearby blood vessel. Cancer cells in blood vessels may travel to other areas of your body. Or cancer cells that get into the lymph system. So if they do break away, it's called metastasis. They break away and go and cause a tumor somewhere else, or we say metastasis. I never say metastasizes. The cells break away and go form a tumor somewhere else. And form additional tumors. This is called metastasis. Additional tumors may form in areas such as the lungs, liver, and bones. Another way cancer may spread to other areas of your body is through your lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. Cancer cells may enter lymph vessels near the tumor, then travel to small glands called lymph nodes. If the cells pass through the nodes, they may continue to travel through your lymphatic system and form additional tumors. Chemotherapy drugs work by targeting fast-growing and reproducing cells, a characteristic common to cancer cells. The tumor shrinks as the cells stop dividing and die. Most chemotherapy drugs work systemically as they travel throughout your body in your bloodstream. As they circulate, the drugs damage metastatic cancer cells in other organs. Unfortunately, chemotherapy drugs cannot tell the difference between fast-growing normal cells and cancer cells. As a result, these drugs also damage or irritate some of your fast-growing normal cells, such as those in your bone marrow, digestive system, and hair follicles. Death, irritation, or damage to these normal cells produces side effects such as a weakened immune system, nausea, and hair loss. The goal of chemotherapy is to reduce or eliminate cancer cells in the original tumor and any sites of metastasis. In addition to being a primary cancer treatment, doctors often use chemotherapy as a secondary treatment before, during, or after other primary cancer treatments, such as radiation therapy or surgical excision of a tumor. Depending on the location and type of cancer, you may receive chemotherapy drugs intended to circulate throughout your body, including pills, capsules, or liquids taken orally, and intravenous or intramuscular injections. Alternatively, you may receive drugs delivered only to the area of the tumor. 
One local method delivers drugs to your bladder or chest through narrow tubes called catheters. Another local method injects drugs into the cerebrospinal fluid surrounding your brain and spinal cord. A third local method places slowly dissolving wafers into an area where a tumor was removed. In most cases, you will receive a number of different chemotherapy drugs to increase their effectiveness. You may receive many chemotherapy treatments spread out over a period of weeks or months. This allows your body to recover between treatments and to kill as many cancer cells as possible. Common side effects of chemotherapy include hair loss, nausea, decreased appetite, fatigue, anemia, bruising, and diarrhea. It is important to rest, eat nutritious foods, and take medications prescribed by your doctor to reduce or minimize these side effects. Some people go around and saying stuff like, hey, sight. There's this guy, the, the crazy person, and then there's Mr. What's his name? There's another chap in the very Plymouth Copper, and I knew the way they were. They're very pretty. Okay, let's watch this. How long is it? Four minutes. Yes, we've got time. Have you ever watched him? Mr. Anderson. He's a nut. He talks fast, but he is so good. Some people go around saying stuff like, hey, science, why don't you quit screwing around making brats that glow in the dark and give us a freaking cure for cancer? First of all, rats that glow in the dark are actually part of getting to a cure to cancer in some cases. And second, curing cancer is really hard, okay? <laughs> They're working on it. And this week on the front lines of cancer research, there was bad news, there was good news, and there was some just unexpected this news. Let's start out with the bad news. A study from the University of Chicago has shown that cancer cells that have been killed by chemotherapy can actually return from the dead by cannibalizing part of themselves. At the cellular level, death is kind of complicated. It's not just an on-off switch. A cell can die in two different ways, by necrosis or apoptosis. Necrosis is what happens when a cell is damaged, like in an injury or from an infection. Apoptosis is when a cell self-destructs. It's also called programmed cell death, and it's how chemotherapy kills cancer. It orders cancerous cells to commit suicide. Typically, a cell undergoing apoptosis will release a bunch of proteins to liquefy it from the inside out. It's like cellular decomposition. But instead of letting these proteins do their messy, juicy job, some zombie cancer cells use special ravenous organelles called lysosomes to eat the self-destructive proteins and use that energy to reanimate themselves. This process, where a dying cell eats part of itself for fuel, is called autophagy, and we now know it's one of the reasons that tumors can come back after chemotherapy. But cancer wasn't scary enough, now there's cannibal undead cancer. But there's also some good news. We might be able to get cancer to kill itself by using magnetically controlled nanoparticles. In a new process developed at Sweden's University of Lund, biologists take tiny grains of iron, and I mean tiny, like 10 nanometers across, and camouflage them with special molecules called ligands. The ligands hide the particles from your body's immune system and allow them to bond to cancer cells, being all like, hey, let me in, I brought beer and Fritos, let's have a cancer cell house party. But once the iron makes it inside the cancerous cell, it heads straight for those hungry, hungry lysosomes binds to them. Although the lysosomes try and digest the particles, they're made for eating organic matter and not, you know, basically tiny tanks. So then, scientists fire a laser at the cancer cell that creates a strong magnetic field. This makes the iron particles start to spin rapidly, generating lots of heat and turning the lysosomes into crazy, spiraling messes until they explode. That heat not only totally ruins the house party, it also triggers the cell's self-destruct mechanism. And with the lysosomes out of commission, there's nothing to stop those suicidal proteins from being released and destroying the cell from the inside out. Did you get that? Okay, I'm not going to ask you this, all right? I can't even remember everything that you said, but nanotechnology, have you heard of that? No. So go and look up, you know, nanotechnology for sunscreen and using nanobots to go into your body and find cancer cells. They're like, yeah, like you're saying, little iron particles co coated with ligands. It's a type of molecule. And finding the cells, that's the new medicine. 
So you guys, in your lifetime, will probably be in prison today to hear about all of these. Okay, so that's called nanotechnology or nanomedicine. Okay, it talks fast, but let's just watch the last bit. It probably takes several years for this treatment to become available to humans, but scientists say it works and they're trying to patent the procedure. Lastly, there's news from cancer research that's just unexpected and so far inexplicable. The American Academy of Neurology recently published a study which shows that older people with Alzheimer's are less likely to die from cancer. Their study followed more than 2,600 people aged 65 or older for an average of 13 years. So what's Alzheimer's? So your brain, your brain cells start um, dying off and you, 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 they, they remember things from way back when that they can't remember now. So where did I see this? There was a, it's also dementia as well, okay, where, um, you know, the daughter would go, oh, my one friend in Portugal, her dad, uh, no, her mom has, got, okay, she's got dementia, but Alzheimer's as well. She visits her mom and she doesn't know who she is. And 10 minutes later, she'll say, who are you? Because it's destroying the brain cells. That's what Alzheimer's is. It's, it's they forget because the brains are getting, the brain's getting old and the cells are not working properly anymore. Yes? Now, what's the difference between dementia and Alzheimer's? Okay, I was just thinking that in my head too. So Alzheimer's, it's, dementia is almost like confusion. You get something called arterial dementia where the cells, because the arteries aren't open enough, the cells don't get enough oxygen, so it causes confusion in that, um, but not memory loss. Alzheimer's is the one that causes memory loss. So they can remember when they were 10 and went with dad to the woods and, you know, whatever, but they can't remember from day to day and who their family members are. Okay, yes, so, so her mom has got Alzheimer's actually. Okay. And the participants who experienced the onset of dementia during the course of the study were 30% less likely to die from cancer. What? And we have no idea why. Cancer causes abnormal cell growth and dementia causes abnormal cell death, but it still doesn't seem like they should interact like that. But now that we have this information, hopefully scientists will be able to figure out more effective ways of treating both. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow News. Find out how you can become president of space and honorary associate producer. Okay, guys, they, they've helped today. Mm -hmm. So I think I've shown, I've shown what is cancer. I think I've shown this one. I didn't put them in the A normal cell, cell to a cancer cell. cell. Take five minutes to get the picture. Okay, let's watch this More one than 60,000 billion cells make up the human body. They are the units that form the tissues which make up our organs, like the liver, heart, and lungs. When the body needs it, our cells split into two and replace those cells that are defective or have come to the end of their lifespan. This makes it possible for our tissues to preserve their shape and their respective functions with the passage of time. Every cell is therefore programmed to multiply and die. This ordered but complex program is controlled by the center of the cell, the nucleus, which contains chromosomes containing many genes made up of DNA. Sometimes, some of these genes undergo a change. The nucleus then sends out abnormal orders and the cell goes wrong. It multiplies uncontrollably and takes on a life of its own. Each new cell produced contains the same defect. The cells proliferate chaotically and form a tumor. This process may be short, but is often long. 10 to 30 years may separate the birth of a first abnormal cell from the appearance of a tumor of about one cubic centimeter. The tumor forms many blood vessels in order to survive. These will supply the tumor with oxygen and nutrients, allowing it to live and grow. This is what we call the phenomenon of angiogenesis. The tumor, however, only really becomes dangerous when the cancerous cells begin to invade through the vessels into the adjacent areas and spread to the surrounding organs. These cells can then invade other parts of the body, multiply and produce new tumors. Metastasis is the term used for this spreading process. But why does a cell become cancerous? There are many factors, and they can exist to different degrees. Factors have been identified, such as hereditary genetic anomalies, exposure to some viruses, HIV, hepatitis B, C, and D, papillomavirus, Epstein-Barr virus, exposure to toxic agents,
chemical products, radiation, sun. Unhealthy behaviors, such as the consumption of alcohol and tobacco. Or a diet too rich in fat and low in fruit and vegetables. Today, over 25 million people in the world live with cancer. 7 million die from it each year. The disease represents the leading cause of mortality for those under 65. Lung cancer is the most widespread, followed by breast cancer, colorectal, stomach, and prostate cancer. The means to combat cancer do, however, exist. These often complementary treatments are used alone or in combination according to the type of cancer and its status. The goal of the treatments is to make it possible to eliminate the tumour and cure the patient in early stage cancer, or like a chronic disease, to control its development. There are mainly three kinds of treatment. Surgery consists of removing the tumour in part or in its entirety. Radiotherapy exposes the tumour to radioactive rays which prevent the diseased cells from multiplying and destroys them. Chemotherapy consists of administering systemic medicinal substances to destroy the cancerous cells or prevent them from spreading. Chemotherapy and radiotherapy act on cancerous cells, but also on healthy cells, which explains their side effects. But today, better knowledge of the characteristics of cancerous cells makes it possible to develop therapies that target the cancer development mechanisms more specifically. Sanofi Aventis R&D is already present in all these areas to fight against cancer on all fronts. Okay, so let's look at my next slide. Alright, so do you see why we do this? Let's just be a bit more aware and yeah, you need to read up and you know if you want to and you read up the good stuff as well and find out maybe new treatments. And how am I going to ask this now if I were to give you a test or something? I'm not, the terminology, but am I going to ask you to regurgitate everything? No. It, it might be a comprehension or, a, you know, like my case studies that we do. It's a, it's a aim three, exposing you to something out there. Like I did with Clive Rice when he passed and he died of brain cancer. And that was topical at the time when I talked about his new treatment. Yes. Now, I have a question on what, what does cancer actually do to you? Like, if you didn't get chemo, if you didn't get anything, that's the, weird, that's the weird thing. How can a growth cause so much pain? A quick question out of the room. Sorry. And how can it cause a, 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 a melanoma? How can that make you die? Yeah. That's what I do. Sorry. It's weird. I don't get that. And I've never read anywhere where he's came to think yeah. about. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so that's what it's all about. Alright, you go ask your stuff. Okay, anything else? Okay, guys, I think we've finished. So, people online, I'll see you. When do I see you again? Monday. Oh, yeah, because I don't see choice one tomorrow. I see choice three. And I don't know if our timetable's changing. But I will upload videos, etc., for those of you who weren't online. Okay, Teglin Co. You can go. Okay. Bye, Teglin. Who else is there?